the Volkswagen Golf GTI Club Sport. That was one of the videos you desired to see. And also you've maybe recently seen this hot lap on the Nürburgring, setting a record lap for front wheel driven compact cars below 80 minutes on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. And we will talk about, let's say, the civilized club sport version here today in Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car views and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We're going to take a detailed look on the exterior, interior and the driving performance with a special Autobahn feature here. We, I think even four different Autobahns will score with this car here today. Look forward to that on Autogefühl in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Normal golf starts at about 80,000 euros in Germany. The club spot at 35,000, so even a little bit more expensive than a normal GTI. And you see here, as we know from GTI, the patch and that the red horizontal fin leads over into the headlights, beautifully done. With the Golf facelift, you will also be able to pick full LED lights in the front. Then, this one here is not facelifted yet because it's the top club sport variant and this one and also comes later here in the lower part stronger bumpers in the club sport variant this is all set for racing and 5.9 seconds is the acceleration figure 0 to 100 or 0 to 62 miles an hour and look forward to those alpina watches acceleration moments will feature for you so a very strong appearance right here i really like it because it's not too much yet i mean it's of course different than with a normal Golf, but it's not um, that you would say it's totally overtuned. 4 meters 26 or 14 foot is the length, so the normal compact Golf length and the GTI features a badge right here and already stronger bumpers, the Club Sport. So not only have the contrast mirror caps in black, also the contrasting black bumper also has this Club Sport wrap right here and also available with semi-slicks, but here at the moment we have winter tires mounted with um, two color rims. Those ones here are 18 inch with red contrasting brake calipers, of course, very much matching those racing red exterior color schemes. So that is beautifully done. And the strong C pillar again, as we used to from the Golf. Do you know about the story on that one from generation to generation? I hope you've already enjoyed the Golf Generations episode on Autogefühl. If not, surely tune into that one as well. And here, another free look at the rear. You can already see that the taillights are dark. Let's look at that from the rear. And the rear, this is the most evil one with the dark taillights here in the Club Sport variant. And um, I prefer it more in a bright style, but maybe you like it evil as uh, this way here. Then the massive wing, this is a definitely different in the Club Sport variant to get more downforce here on the race track, for example. But I think it is very well executed, so very well integrated. It doesn't look like totally attached. It's very smooth transition everywhere. Or what do you think about this rear. Is that your favorite GTI? So the car key, standard one, 
but with the GTI badge. Very solid door handles as we know it and solid clo door closing sound. <laughs> then we have those um, comp style inlets right here. Good build quality also with all of the small buttons we have. First Alcantara service here. Now the red is being used on the inside of the doors. So very solid. A lot of space also at the inside of the doors. Then GTI entry badges and there we are. And special GTI performance seats. We really love those. And um, oh, someone has a problem with the alarm with their car. Obviously, that happens. So then microfiber here. You see it here with a GTI badge. Very beautiful and fabric inlet. And that's the best combination. I even prefer fabric more than Alcantara on the inside because it has better climate comfort. It doesn't get so warm in summer in Alcantara on the sides then to make it a little bit stickier. And the GTI microfiber steering wheel, perfect setup. That's really so great. Of course, you don't sweat here either. 12, 12 o'clock position here, um, rally style. And you can also use it with glove, by the way. You always got a good grip and it's also cozy in winter times and sometimes both just to touch it. It's cozier than, um, than the animal skin steering wheel and also more sustainable. You can change the steering wheel like this. Really great setup. And the seats offer you enough space. Um, one means 86, six with one for non-subscribers. A lot of headroom still left and can be manually adjusted. So this is an emotional racing setup but at the same time with sustainable materials and also very comfortable for everyday driving. So they really have thought about that. Job well done. And the materials here, for example, soft and touch plastics here. Um, surely a dream golf interior. Cockpit overview. Everything is cleaned up. Typical for the golf is that we here in the middle. The middle console is a little bit uh, leaned towards the driver. And again, the steering wheel also with the comp structure here on the inside. The biggest infotainment system is equipped here optionally. Proximity sensor, more soon, de more, uh, more deal to that soon. Then the climate unit below that with big turning knobs, so easy to control also while driving. Manual shifting lever, six speed manual with this golf ball style. A DSG would optionally be available as well. This golf ball style is, by the way, very interesting from a haptical feeling as well. And storage space in the lower part already, for example, for basement garage beeper. Everything from a solid build quality, you see everything fits to each other. Glove box slides down smooth with a lot of space inside. Beverage holders right there, electric handbrake, 12 volt power supply, and you see the armrest here, solid build quality. You cannot really move it here up and around, and with some space on the inside. Instruments, classic layout, left side RPM, right side speed, and in the middle one a speedometer that you can also watch auto fuel speed in the driving part. See here, proximity sensor, um, this is the biggest screen available yet. For the, before the facelift, um, zoom in and out with the face of the Golf, and then it will be also a little bit bigger and without those buttons, those will be capacitive. So check out the Golf facelift world premiere and there will later also be a driving part of that one. Other than that, the menu, you can scroll like this, but also with this button, the both is possible. App connect, then you can connect your phone with a cable and use the mirroring function. Other than that, you can press phone and connect it via Bluetooth. That is possible as well. And there's also for example, the traffic um, announcement in the highest trim level. So got a lot of possibilities. Think also well integrated. I like it still when there are still some real hotkeys. What about you? So let's get in the rear. This Club Sport variant does have a rear bench. The Club Sport S does not have a rear bench. It's really optimized for the racetrack. That was also the car that scored the record lap on the Nürburgring because then you also, together with some um, uh, other things, they've reduced, save about two, even more than 200 kilograms of weight in comparison to this version, which is suitable still for everyday driving. Um, the package we have, still some room in front of my knees. 
um, in a Škoda Rapid Spacewick. That's even more, for example, but that's just standard golf size. So if you have a club sport, you don't lose space and um, it's really okay. You know, it's basically standard for a compact car. Also for the headroom here in the rear, so with four tall adults, you can basically travel. It's not a problem, even though, um, you know, there are some other cars that have more knee room here, but I think it's really ranking pretty well overall. Two beverage holders here behind, and there's also this ski hatch available. And if you want to fold the seats, you have to do it from here in the one third two sort split. Let's check how it looks like from the trunk. But one of the things I really like here, I have to say, is that we also got this style, this racing style, um, almost imitating two single seats here in the rear, like, you know, same style in the front, also very beautifully done. So, flipping the logo here opens the hatch, also standard for golf. Here there is a replacement tire and inside there's a DIN audio sound system, which gives a pretty good sound. So standard sizes here in the rear, as we know it from golf, and you see this is the one third, two thirds split. Overall satisfying. There are some cars that offer more space, but also a lot that offer less space at this size. So under the hood, by the way, it's always easy to open with this mechanism here below. Um, you have to release it from the inside, of course, and then also with hydraulic dampers. Easy to open, take a look at it, 3D VW logo, 2 liter turbo, 265 horsepower in this variant. Well, the Golf R has 300 horsepower, but this is the front wheel driven car and um, yeah, the highly tuned GTI then. Uh, with the Golf facelift, the normal GTI also gets some more horsepower, so now it's 230 and 245 for the GTI performance. That makes the gap between those ones and the clubs a little bit shorter, but the clubs are also more about the suspension setup we will experience also when we drive it. Of course, um, also about some special features in the interior. So let's start here with our driving part and I promised in the beginning it will be an Autobahn special driving part. Three different German Autobahn in one review here. But we will start with some city riding because that will also be part of your GTI Club Sport ride for sure. And we are driving a six-speed manual here. And well, you can also do some racing inside the city, <laughs> as long as you watch out, of course, that's possible. And this is also one of the key factors of this car. You're always ready to race. And you've probably also seen that that's already a lot of fun. Just, you know, taking one or two corners here um, inside the city that's already so much fun and maybe waiting for the next red traffic light. What you do immediately feel here with the Club Sport version is that the suspension is stiffer. That's really, really remarkable. Such a nice acceleration and you know the, the engine sound. Yeah, it's only a two liter turbo. But still, it's a um, 4 2 liter turbo, uh, relatively refined sound. Oh, there's a Seat Leon Cupra behind us. So, two very comparable cars. So, if you're running over straight bumps or so, you do feel the suspension is stiffer. And um, in general, it's, you know, definitely more comfortable to ride a normal GTI. So. If your focus is more to have a balanced car between sportiness and comfort, then the normal GTI version is surely better for you. If you really appreciate that the stiff suspension in everyday driving, 
then this one would be the preferable version. The other thing, the racing features that also helps you in every driving situation. Talked about it earlier, the steering wheel. It's, I mean, even there's no heated steering here, but if you have a microfiber steering wheel, you also don't really need a heated steering wheel because the surface doesn't get so cold in winter and it's just all time cozy just to, to touch it. And yeah, there might be some people saying, ah, you know, it wears out faster, but seriously, whatever. Even if that happens, you can always just put some new microfiber on the steering wheel, but even after some years, I'm not really sure if that will be necessary, but if it would be necessary at some point, it's also not the most expensive aspect of all. And then all, I mean, I can really promise you, hardly any cars do have the microfiber steering wheels. And no matter if you, you're seeking for a sporty experience or a comfortable one, you will always enjoy it. I think it's one of the best things you can put in a car because, I mean, sitting here, what do I really touch? What do I directly feel? It's this one, it's the steering wheel. I'm just touching the steering wheel, I'm not touching anything else. Well, the shifting stick, that's it, maybe. But also not permanently, so this is very important. Another GTI in front of us now, an, an older version. It, uh, it's always hard to differentiate between Golf 5 and 6, isn't it? But either Golf 5 or Golf 6, I think it should be the 6 with the LED signature, yeah. Because the Golf 5 has this um, this very round style of, of tail gaze, uh, tail lights as well, so well, should be a six one. So this autobahn here is um, at the moment in constru construction works, but that will soon be over, so we can steadily increase the speed. So at the moment I'm in fourth gear, and that's also the thing about this turbo. Yeah, I also generally prefer naturally aspirated engines for sure, but the good thing about the turbos is even if you're in a higher gear and maybe accelerate on the out one, there's still something coming up, you know. For example, here just in fourth gear and put the throttle and car still accelerating, even at lower RPMs. So that's where the turbo is really helping you. 12 o'clock, here with the steering wheel, so I see when I'm going straight. And the nice thing is, so precise. So this is a so-called progressive steering. It means the more you increase the angle, the more the steering angle is also increased. So you can always leave the hands on the steering wheel at with DSG always, with manual shift only when you shift. So what about some acceleration guys? 80, third gear, let's go. 140. Wow. Cool. So we don't need a V8 for that. And the sound is really nice, isn't it? And this was still a comfort mode, by the way. We're soon coming also to the driving modes. And it's really so much fun to drive this car. And I always enjoy driving sporty cars which are based on normal cars because they're not, not that extreme in a way. And you can, you know, have, have both basically a normal car feeling and at the same time a sporty one for sure. So 140. Another thing we realized the sound insulation as good as ever. You know that's basically with the with the most Volkswagen cars, especially here with the Golf, good sound insulation. Even at 140 I don't have to raise my voice that much. Sixth gear would be the highest one then. This is more for relaxing. Let's check the RPMs. At the moment 130 kilometers an hour at 3000 RPMs. Later on, as we're driving a little bit further, we can also tell you something more about the consumption. Of course, you have to be careful because here in this part I'm also doing some acceleration tests for you. But again, Autobahn just puts the consumption usually a little bit lower, even if you do some acceleration. So let's see afterwards. But you know, 
this two liter turbo, no matter in which horsepower spec you have it, it's not really, you know, not really good for, for, for a low consumption. That's, that's for sure. So there's still a lot of traffic here, but this is basically some Autobahn part where you can do some free accelerating. And I would say, what about some another Alpina watches acceleration moment? Today, again, once more with the Star Timer Pilot Chronograph, third gear. Very nice. And let me bring you also, let's see, we can give you another view there. Let's go to driving data. Lap time. Oh, there's even a lap timer. So there you can also see the speed in the middle display. No, can you really see it? Let's put the steering wheel a little bit further in. Let's just check again. Yeah, that's the way. So now there's also the digital speedometer, you can very well observe then. So you can change to higher gear and be very relaxed. And then again just change back to the racing mode and really hammer the throw. This is the compromise this car is offering. And as long as there are no harsh bumps in the road, the suspension is also not uncomfortable. So yeah, I do have more contact to the road and see, wow, look at this reaction from the cars, no tilting at all, direct steering control. But it's not getting rough with this suspension as long as the road is, you know, fairly good. Um, just, you know, when you're riding inside the city and got those harsh bumps or something, then you do feel a difference here for the club sport suspension variant. So this was the first Autobahn. We're soon changing to another one and maybe if you're driving in Germany yourself, you know, um, one of the most fun parts are usually also the transitions from one Autobahn to another because then you can also test how is the car behaving really in corners and also in, in faster driven corners for sure. And then you can again also checked out the digital speedometer at that time. And what we'll also do is changing the driving modes. At the moment this was comfort. Of course the driving modes sorry. Can enjoy this one here. Such nice corners here. Wow, very nice. So we have to settle for the behind the truck for a moment, but then I can explain the driving modes. So driving modes again. So there's comfort basically. It makes more sense with the DSG in combination because then, for example, we had the sailing mode with eco mode. The car's just rolling then, and basically the engine is cut off. Um, and also in the sport mode, which we're going to now, then also the DSG is accelerating harder. Um, so shifting later up and shifting earlier down. I'm doing that myself here now, um, so the sport mode does not have the most effect. good performance. I think the sport mode gave us a little bit more sound, didn't it? Not sure. So 180 now. What do you think? Does the sport mode work sound-wise? Not, not that sure, because it already was giving us a well sound before. Now, by the way, um, on this autobahn part, 
Um, see also maybe on camera it's getting a little bit rougher. So and they are also feeding the suspension. Like pop, 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 pop. So as soon as the road gets a little bit worse you do feel the difference even more. So again for you know if you're more a normal car riding person, just want a little bit sporty, then leave it with the normal GTI version because that's still perfect, perfectly comfortable. Here you really have to be um, a, a racing geek that you really say, I want to have this, this stiffness. It's with the light of the old Mercedes in front of us, that's really strange. They're flickering all the time. Okay that happened. So also when you do some lane change, look at how precise the steering wheel reacts. <laughs> nice. So um, this plane, Golf, has in a way a better racing characteristics than some of the true sports cars. I mean, it's not that heavy. Still in the normal club sport variants, 1,400 kilograms. The club sport S, then again, that one had 250 kilograms less, also because the rear bench is missing. Um, but again, sold out anyway, so 400 pieces was the limit. So we don't have to think about that anymore. Oh, by my driving, I already decreased <laughs> my destination time two minutes lower. But by the way, um, I'm having the GPS running at the same time. And the good thing is, as soon as the voice appears the first time, I just have to turn down the volume and then it remains shut off. And if I want to put it on again, I don't have to go deep in the menu. I just, you know, in a, in a situation where I know, okay, the voice would be speaking maybe at an intersection, I just turn it up again. And this is really, I think, a good solution because it's easily done. And sometimes I don't want to hear the GPS voice, I just want to check it in the, in the screen and also in the small screen in the front of me, you've seen it early in the beginning of this review, I also had just those arrow displays, so that was a plain display that's also helping me, that's so perfectly fine as well. And of course for reviews, very important that we don't have all the time disturbance by, oh in 200 meters, something like that. Now 80 to 120, let's go once more, third gear, bam. That's it. That was already 126, but the, probably you have seen it on the display. So good acceleration moments here today. And again, I mean, a GTI is never such an exaggerated sports car. That's also good that it remains still the basic elegance of a Golf 7. That's again another aspect. It's so great, you have seen also a great grip with a microfiber steering wheel that helped me also in every corner situations and stuff. And then again, with, for example, speed is limited to 120. I go in a higher gear and relax a little bit more then. The acceleration figure here from 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 62 miles an hour was 5.9 seconds. So it's a little bit faster than um, the normal GTIs. Well, do you feel that 20 or 30 horsepower more? A little bit, a little bit. It's not a huge difference. The biggest difference here in the club sport is that you've got a great steering wheel and also there's uh, special sports seats. So you, g this guy is giving me, uh, uh, you know, flashing lights. I mean, he's driving faster than, than it's allowed, and we're not doing that, especially not on camera. <laughs> but I mean, if this guy would know what we got under the hood here, maybe he would regret his, his decision. We'll meet again at the racetrack, <laughs> then we'll see who's the fastest here. I mean, every, every noob can go 30 kilometers more than allowed on an autobahn. But is that something special? I think not. So another 
advantage here of having a compact car, for example here, construction site on the motorway, and so we got narrow lanes. And here the advantage is I don't feel nervous or something like that. If I would have a bigger car, it's like, oh, do I hit here and there? And that could be a problem actually, and here no problem at all. So what I want to show you is also um, the aspect of the assistant systems, because if you're not racing at the time, maybe you also want to enjoy those. And one of the very important ones is the blind spot monitor, which is available for every Golf, of course. And um, so when someone is overtaking us, and look at the left mirror now, so now car is approaching, it's a goal 4, funnily. There the yellow or orange light is flashing and now I don't want to change lane, lanes at that moment. So goal 4, generations meeting here today as well. Then, what about the cruise control? Setting it and this one here is also equipped with the ACC, the adaptive cruise control, means the car is retaining the speed and also keeping the distance to the car in front of me. This one here also one of the most accurate solutions in the automotive industry. It's really flawless. Of course it works better together with the DSG as the speed can also reduce to zero then with manual shifting. That is always, you know, because the engine would be stalled by the car itself and that's not happening. So it's always limited to, um, to lower speeds. So the best combination is ACC plus automatic transmission, of course. We have not talked about shifting yet. I'm usually also more a fan of very good automatic transmission, but whoa, this truck is coming close. <laughs> Although we have a big car. But shifting here is fun. Um, first of all, I've shown you earlier this golf ball surface of the shifting lever that is just fun to touch and you know it's always about having fun in the car as well and this one here of course so nice because most of the cars which have Alcantara or cross seats still have leather steel wheel we don't have that here and also the this golf ball I think it's not sure if it's a leather surface maybe it's also just a plastic so I'm not sure exactly sure about it, it should be plastic yeah should. And this is a very interesting structure. Yeah, you couldn't form it otherwise with this golf ball style. And also the shifting ways are very short and crisp. So if you are shifting, it goes very fast. Blap, 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 blap. There's a lot of fun if you prefer that sporty way. And they also found a way, well, usually with a normal golf, um, there's hardly any shifting resistance, so everything is very smoothly done. This one here also feels very evolved while shifting, but at the same time they have, um, they've put in some kind of racing resistance, if you know what I mean. So that you do feel in your hand that you're shifting. So it's not that it would be feeling like less quality, it's just that you know this is a sporty car, and I have to put in the gears and that you also hear it. And I think it's a very interesting thing. Um, you also feel it, by the way, with uh, um, when you have a Porsche with manual gearbox, for example. Uh, we had that in the Cayman GTS, I think, from the before it became the 718. There we also have a manual, a manual gearbox. That was also very interesting to shift. Always nice just to shift back to the third gear and then uh, hammer the throttle just for one second. And now I can show you the cruise control again. Distance to the car in front of me is kept perfectly. I can also set the distance minimum, one more, maximum. Now I felt the car was deceleration see here, leaving a little bit more distance. Or if I put the other way around again then the distance is decreased and steadily going closer to the car again. But at the moment the car is accelerating, therefore <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> so I was remaining at the same speed. 
the car increased the speed just a little bit. So, I think we should switch over to the third autobahn, third motorway for today. Because this construction site here is, I mean, it's good to test the ACC and blind spot monitor and stuff, but that's about it. And, but we had in the, in the beginning a part where we could hammer the throttle. Hope you enjoy this special autobahn riding part here today with me. So we'll save some speed for the full acceleration. Or maybe we can take something off this that's corner, corner here. Some lane change just for you. We get some more action. Switching back again. Such a nice handling. You see already closer again to the next car. That goes so fast with the GTI Club Sport. Next minute you're again close to the other car. So getting on the autobahn is always easy with that one here. And this also at some point has, a, has an aspect of safety because if I can accelerate fast I can also do some overtaking maneuvers or getting on the motorway, motorway um, just faster and in a more safe way. So <laughs> this could be the, I mean, but just think about it, you know, talking to your wife. Ah, let's get a Golf 1.2 TFSI. And then she, ah, come on, let's get a GTI because, you know, because safety, you know, it's safer to get on the autobahn if you have a little bit more power. And then, ah, okay, honey, ah, if it's about safety, yeah, of course, you know, get your GTI. And then the deal is sealed. <laughs> just a tip for you, maybe. Maybe discuss that at Christmas, or something like that. <laughs> but I think it's really true. So in situations like those, um, where I know if I'm waiting, I maybe, maybe have to stop, get slower, and that's even more dangerous. So best thing in this situation is just go for it and get safely onto the motorway before everyone else behind you. So this could be some one very interesting solution then. Oh, that's a Seat Leon Experience. We have tested that one before, it's in front of us. I've hardly seen that one from customers. Very rare and just a very small percentage. Um, nice to see it on the road. You see it's a little bit put higher with the crossover look there. Also check out the Leon Experience review on Autogefühl, that's for sure very interesting. Wait a minute. Is it four motorways here today? Oh, did you hear that? When I leave the throttle, then we also get nice sounds from the exhaust. Seems to be a four motorway battle here today. I didn't expect that. <laughs> but why not? Well, this motorway here is rather a little bit disappointing anyway. <laughs> it's really so much fun here. So what about the seats? They offer you good side support also in the corners. That's really nice. Um, from a general long-term comfort, I mean, the Golf itself, it's really good and comfortable car. Um, I can just say that for my very body, I do feel more comfortable already in mid-size segment cars. Um, really depends also um, you know, on, on your body height and also the ratio of of legs and your upper body and I would even say that I still have a comfort plus when I'm moving from a compact segment to a mid-sized car so if I would be going like 30,000 40,000 kilometers a year I would still go class up to mid-size or compact SUV So let's check out the speed here. So because in Germany it works that way, when someone is going on the motorway, when there's a possibility and there's no sign, then it means it's unlimited speed. And 
2018. You've maybe seen also the RPMs go up to 7,000, so the car is really working a lot. Now we're already getting off the motorway again, but I think we had so much enjoyable moments here, and the good thing is, I was never really in a very critical situation. That's also the most important part. So sometimes we get some questions, hey, why are you not doing like uh, zero to 100 all the time, zero to 200? Auto food is also about safety first. It's about having fun in the car, yes. But for me, the most important thing is, you know, remaining safe and also, you know, with the, with the cameraman um, supporting me. And I mean, all of the other guys around here, I mean, you have to look at the people around you and then really pay attention that you don't endanger anyone. So, this was sport mode all the time, by the way. Um, you can also go to um, ESC Sport. <sighs> Doesn't make so much sense here with a front wheel drive car. I don't think so. If it's, by the way, not wet, you don't miss an all-wheel drive. It's really, if it's really wet, then it can make sense to have an all-wheel drive. Then you would be better off with a Golf R, for example. Turning off the ESC or even the ESC, so ESC Sport was pressing once and ESC totally off would be when I see, heard that sound or would when I hold the ESC button down. But I would not recommend you recommend to do that. I don't see any reason for that. Maybe I would go to ESC Sport when I have a rear wheel drive car that sometimes I can slide around in the rear a little bit more, but then also just on the race circuit or a free parking spot. Generally, when driving on the road, as I said, safety first, and here with the front wheel drive car, you're probably even faster and, and better going if you leave the stability control in, because wheel spin is something that could be spectacular, but it's not really helping you as for being faster or accelerating better in a way. So that's about this aspect. And then the last aspect for this riding part. So let's check out the consumption. And that was 9.7 liters on 100 kilometers. I mean, it's it's not that little for a two-liter turbo. That's for sure. I have to just check where I'm going here now. Uh, I think here seems to be like um, so nine point seven seconds. Uh, sorry, nine point seven liters. Then again, we had a lot of acceleration tests, and so if you would count them out, we should probably be able to reach nine for sure. I think eight liters is possible when you're riding on the autobahn, but then again, if you think about it, you also want to have some fun with the car, then you can count also with 10 liters. Also, if you mix, for example, street, city driving stuff, so something 9, 10 liters is basically a realistic figure. Now I'm done. I hope you enjoyed it. So the Golf GTI Club Sport of course it makes more sense to pick this version here than the Club Sport S without the rear bench. Well, you know, maybe for hardcore GTI racetrack fans, but sadly all the Club Sport S are already sold out. Then in general, what about the Club Sport? Yeah, it has a stiffer suspension. It's suitable surely for, for racing. You can you can do that. Other than that, for normal daily driving, a normal GTI offers a better compromise between comfort and sport, that's for sure. What I like best about this one is the interior with the special GTI racing seats, you know, with Alcantara and fabric surface, and of course, this microfiber steering wheel, that's so great, one of my favorites. And um, 
I think I would love that to see it in, in, in every GTI, basically. Um, I think we have to scroll again the price list, if that is also available maybe for a normal GTI. If not, they should offer it. We should check that out again. I want to see your feedback, of course, in the comments there for this car. How you like the Club Sport variant and of course stay tuned for other golf videos. We'll link them um, in, our, uh, in our cards here and also video descriptions and soon another golf facelift driving review. We'll always keep you updated at Auto Gefühl. Hope you enjoyed it here today, also with a special Autobahn part. See you next time. Bye.